What's up, y'all? So as many of you know, Beyonce's new album called Renaissance dropped a few days ago. And y'all, we got to talk about this because there is a lot to talk about with this album. So I'm not going to waste much time in this video. I want to talk about the album itself, right? The album cover, different things like that. And then we're going to do a deep dive into the specific lyrics of about five or six of some of the most explicit songs on this album so that you can see some of the hidden messages, the hidden agenda that Queen Bee is trying to communicate to the world. And then towards the end of this video, I'm going to be sharing with you my personal thoughts on how we as Christians should react to this. Now, as always, with a longer video like this, timestamps are in the description of this video so that you can go to wherever you want. But guys, just I beg of you, I plead with you, don't do that. Please watch this entire video because towards the end of this video, there are some very, very important things that I share that I really, really think are gonna benefit you as it relates to how we as Christians should look at this particular album and music like this in general. Now, spoiler alert, I'm just gonna let you know that this album is straight up satanic, straight up demonic, and I'm just gonna encourage you, I'm gonna go out and say it right now, if you are a Christian and you're listening to this, you're working out to it and you got it on your, uh, your, your phone and you're dancing to it and you're purchasing it and you might even consider going to the concert. Look, guys, I'm going to just come out and say you need to stop. As a Christian, you need to stop. And I hope that that will become very, very clear as we dig into this. All right. So first and foremost, let's just talk about the album cover itself. Now, it is very possible that Beyonce just has a thing for horses. I give her the benefit of the doubt on that. Or there could be some sort of underlying message that she is trying to communicate to the world. Where am I going with this? In the book of Revelation chapter six, at the beginning of the tribulation period, there is what's called the four horsemen. Now, the first horseman is the rider on the white horse. Most people believe that this is the antichrist. And then this is followed up by the second horse, which is a red horse. And this red horse represents bloodshed, war, uh, uh, anarchy, all sorts of different things like that. Murder, hence the color red. And then this was followed up with the black horse, which represents famine, which is a natural consequence of what happens after most wars. Uh, there's economy that's bad, things like that. And then after that, there's a pale horse. That's horseman number four. And this represents sickness, pestilence, disease, which is once again another consequence to um, uh, bloodshed and bad economy and all these different things. So you have famine and all this different stuff, sickness, pestilence, and whatnot. Now, Beyonce, over the past several years, has appeared on all four of these horses, right? She's appeared on a white horse. She's appeared on a red horse. She's appeared on a black horse. She has appeared on a pale horse, which is the horse that is on the cover of her most recent album, Renaissance. Now, I'm not going to press this too hard because I don't want to be guilty of pushing any sort of conspiracy theory, but I'm just saying it is very, very interesting that these things are all kind of correlating together. Now, with that being said, Another thing that we need to look at is what message is she trying to communicate to the world with regards to this album? Well, she dedicates this album to her late uncle Johnny. And let's just read about her dedication here in a minute. Now, to give you a little bit of context, her uncle, who is not really her uncle, she dedicates this album to because he was a gay man and he was uh, uh, battling with HIV, had some complications, and as a result, he died. And this is what she says about him. A big thank you to my Uncle Johnny, she wrote on her website. He was my godmother. Now, already, I'm having problems with this. Like, if he's a guy, why is she referring to him as her godmother? So there's something already wrong with that. And the first person to expose me to a lot of the music and culture that serve as inspiration for this album. Now, later on in the article, she refers to him as the most fabulous gay man. And then finally, later on, she says this. And witnessing his battle with HIV was one of the most painful experiences I've ever lived. I'm hopeful that his struggle served to open pathways for other young people to live more freely 
LGBTQI rights are human rights, Beyonce added. So it is very, very clear, y'all, that she is pushing the LGBTQ agenda. She is a champion. She is um, um, co-signing with this type of lifestyle and this idea that you need to be able to live your truth, whatever your truth is, and, and so this is what she is pushing. Okay, so now that we understand a little bit about the album itself and who it was dedicated to and what it's all about, the message behind it, let's get into the crux of this video and let's analyze about five or six of the most explicit songs on this album. And I really want you as a Christian to really start to think about should I continue to support, to listen to, and to have any sort of connection, if you will, in terms of my heart uh, posture or whatever, to Beyonce? Now, let's start off with the very first thing that I noticed about the album is that when you pull it up on Spotify, the first four songs have a little E on it, which means they are explicit, and you're going to see that as we bring up the lyrics of the first song, I'm That Girl. So right out the gate, you see it says, please MF, I have this stuff, by the way, I can't even repeat on this particular channel because it is so vulgar, okay? Notice it says, please mother, blah, 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 please mother, please mother, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all throughout the song, nothing but vulgarity. And then she says this because I'm in that hole, okay? So she, I don't know, she calls herself a hoe. I'm not sure why she's doing that. Uh, so she's saying that again and again, all the way through the song. There really isn't any substance to it at all. It's just cursing, uh, vulgarity, again and again and again, really no point to the song. Now, the second song on this album is called Cozy. It's probably the most satanic, most demonic song on this particular album. And basically to set it up, it's all about kind of responding to your haters and hey, I'm cozy in my own skin. I'm comfortable with who I am. If you come at me with daggers, if you come at me as a hater, you know what? I'm not giving you any sort of time, not even giving you any mental space because I'm comfortable. I'm cozy in who I am. Now, with that background, let's check out the lyrics. She starts by saying the D word. I love the burning of the dagger. So she's talking about people who may have trying to hate her, trying to, you know, throw daggers at her or whatever. And once again, uh, talking about kissing my scars, things like that. And she now refers to either herself or her sister, people really aren't sure, but as a God. So she says, she's a God. So there's a problem right there that she is referencing herself or someone else as a deity. Now that is a problem right there and it is a direct offense to the one and only true God. Now, uh, people think that she was referring to her sister because she's talking about this. Might I suggest that you don't F with my sister, so on and so forth. Once again, I'm comfortable in my skin, cozy with who I am. It's going to get worse, so stay with me right here. And then she uses God's name in vain right here, just straight up, just not just use his name in vain like OMG, like she curses the name of God in this particular song, all right? But let's keep going, all right? Because there is more and more vulgarity here in this particular song. Uh, and then she goes into this idea of like, uh, green eyes envy me. Now, I personally think that that probably has something to do with reference to like white women maybe who are talking about her. I don't know because they have white, white uh, green eyes rather. And so maybe she's talking about like, you guys envy me, you guys hate me. But yet at the same time, you know, in other words, you're hating on me, but at the same time, you envy me. You want to be me. You want to have my body. You want to have my curves, all these different things. And then the next line, paint the world blank pink. I can't even repeat that. All right. And so once again, super, super uh, vulgar up here. She's using the B word uh, once again. So let's keep going. And then here is the very interesting, uh, very hidden thing that you see going on here. And it's a it's a a hidden message that communicates her her support, if you will, her being a champion once again to the LGBTQ community. I want you to notice how many colors she mentions towards the end of this particular song. She's got green. She's got black. So let's start. She's got black. She's got green. She's got pink. She's got blue. She's got purple, gold. Blue, black, white, brown, uh, cinnamon, yellow. And then if you really still don't get what she's trying to say, 
rainbow gelato in the streets, right? So once again, we know that is the, the color of the flag, the pride flag and different things like that representing that particular community. So she is clearly trying to get this particular message across that it's okay, I'm supporting this, you be you, you live your truth, things like that, a straight up satanic, demonic, liberal agenda. Okay, so let's move on to the third song, which is called Alien Superstar. Now, before we get into this, the Bible says, love not the world, nor the things in the world. And if you do, the love of God is not in you. And then he says, what is the world? He says, well, it's the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And what I see with Beyonce, with this particular album, and quite frankly, most of her albums, if I'm being honest with you, is this promotion of this worldly spirit, lusting of the eyes, promiscuity, uh, sensuality, different things like that, pride of life. And this is what we're going to see in this particular song, this idea that it's all about me, all about you, need to worship me, and I'm the queen bee, this, that, and the other. It's just, it's just not a godly message. And I'm not saying that I expect it to be. What I'm saying is as Christians, why do we support this type of thing? Okay. Now let's keep reading. She says here, I'm one of one. I'm number one. I'm the only one. So already she's talking about herself. Once again, the Bible says, don't praise yourself. Let somebody else praise you, right? That's true humility. You don't have to go around. I'm the one. I'm the only one. Like, I, that's literally narcissistic. You're thinking about yourself. You're talking about how important you are. Okay, so let, let's keep going. No one else in the world can think like me. Wow, okay, that's interesting. I'll contradict it, keep him addicted, lies on his lips, I lick it. Now, once again, I mean, it's going to get bad, so stay with me, especially when we get to the next song, Cuff It. It's going to get real, real X-rated, all right? But she's talking about some, some sensual stuff here, uh, uh, talking about some things that she, she wants to do, whatever, licking stuff, lying on his lips, uh, all, all of that. Then once again, you have some more vulgarity using the B word things like that. And then towards the end of the song, more references to sex and sensuality. I got pearls beneath my legs and people think this might be a reference to Maya Angelou's poem. Okay, fine. My lips, my hands, my hips. I got diamonds between my thighs. Like, do we really need to think about all of this type of stuff? It's just satanic. Where his ego will find bliss. Okay, so now let's start analyzing some of the most raunchiest, like X-rated lyrics I have ever heard or actually I didn't even listen to it. I couldn't listen to it. I just had to read the lyrics because I didn't want to put that in my spirit. Okay. The next song is called Cuff It. Cuff It. All right. So let's just read it. It starts off with more vulgarity. I'm in the mood to F something up. All right. Um, I need some drink in my cup. So she is uh, supporting and encouraging this idea of getting drunk, having parties, having sex, Hey, I'm just going to have a good time. I'm in the mood, do whatever I want to do, things like that. Hey, pour me a drink. I'm in the mood to F something up. And then she gets really X-rated. I want to go higher. Can I sit on top of you? Now we know what she's talking about, right? And don't worry, she's going to make it even more explicit in just a few lines. She's talking about wanting to be on top of a guy or whatever. I want to go where nobody's been. Have you ever had fun like this? Uh, and then she's talking about, uh, yeah, unapologetic. When we F up the night, F up the night, we, we getting F'd up tonight. We're going to F up the night, so on and so forth. Let's keep going because it gets worse. Now she's talking about more sex. Uh, you, Mr. Nasty, I'll clean it up. I mean, come on now. Look, I mean, do we really have to spell this out? We know what happens after sex. We know what happened after, after, after all this stuff. And she's literally... This is the type of stuff that she's feeding down the, the minds of our, our youth, our young. Listen, if you're a parent, you need to make, you need to ask your parent, kids if they're listening to this and you need to, you, because they're getting this type of stuff in their spirit because they're not really even paying attention to the, the lyrics probably as much. They're just kind of bumping to the music or whatever, but this is the agenda of the enemy that is being promoted to this next generation. All right, I'll clean it up, different things like that. Okay, now it gets worse. It gets worse and I'm going to find it. Here it is, uh, hypersonic sex erotic. Okay, on my body, boy, you got it. 
hit them drawlicks while I ride it. Are you kidding me? Like, this is straight up soft porn, right? Like, we know what hydraulics do to a car. It makes it go up and down. And she's basically saying, I want my man to be like a car with hydraulics going up and down while I sit there and ride him, right? This is just, this is just the enemy's agenda. And then got me acting hella thoughty. Now, I personally didn't even know what that word meant. So I actually had to look it up, thoughty. And when I looked it up, I found out that it actually means uh, that hoe over there, T-H-O-T, right? And so that's the idea. But then when you when you go down a little bit to the Urban Dictionary, a thoughty is a promiscuous female, otherwise known as a slut whore or, okay, I, I, I don't even feel comfortable as a Christian man, as a minister, even repeating some of these things. A female who very much enjoys sex. Okay, so when you're listening to this, just know that's what she is referring to, right? Even the Wiktionary, sexually promiscuous woman, things of that nature, right? So this is what she is communicating here. And, and then uh, once again, got me acting this way, so excited, so exotic. I'm a seasoned professional. So I'm a professional, right, at what I do sexually, right? I'm a professional. Squeeze it. Don't let it go. We know what she's talking about. We know what she wants, stuff like that. Tease it. No self-control. Uh, so on and so forth. I can't wait to come out and play. Uh, and then cuff it, cuff it, cuff it, cuff it, baby. And then while I bust it, bust it, bust it for you, baby. Now, I once again didn't know what this word meant. So I had to look this one up. Like, what does it mean to bust it, Right. And I found that that has an, a meaning as well, all right? And, and, and literally notice what it says. What is the meaning of bust it? And I, I, I don't even want to repeat this, but it says literally it means bust it or bust it open, referring to a woman's butt or yes, this, but it's slang, all right? So this is what she is referring to. This is what she's talking about wanting to do with her man, maybe Jay-Z, maybe, I, I don't know, encouraging you to do, I, I don't know, right? I, I know it's not godly, all right? I, and then, boy, for you, I'm backing the truck up, all okay? right? We know what that, and a B, get effed up. I, I can't even read this stuff, right? Because it is so, so demonic, and there's the end of that song. Whew, okay, now, it actually gets worse because there's another song shortly after that that's called Church Girl, and really and truly just to give you a little bit of context for this this song is really talking about kind of what happens the night before a lot of christian girls go to church so they're a church girl cuz so they go to church on sunday morning but they kicking it in the club on saturday night the night before church and she's actually kind of encouraging this and championing this idea let yourself go you're going to see it in these lyrics right here Towards the beginning, she says, I'm warning everybody, as soon as I get in this party, I'm going to let go of this body. I'm going to love on me. I'm just going to be free. I'm just going to dance. I'm just going to let go of my body because it's Saturday night. It's a party. I'm feeling good. Woo, have some drinks. Have a good time. Hey, let's keep going. And then she uses that. Okay, nobody can judge me but me. No, that's not true. We are called to judge people's actions as Christians, right? All right, I'll drop it like a thotty. There's that word again. Drop it like a thotty. Uh, and once again, another time, another time. And then she says, uh, church girls acting loose, bad girls acting snotty. You bad, right? And then once again, it's encouraging you, if you're a church girl, encouraging you, let it go, girl. Let it go. Let it go, girl. Let it out. Just enjoy yourself. You have a good time. Twerk that mm like you came out the South, girl. Drop it like a thotty. Drop it like a thotty. Don't hurt. Bad girl acting naughty. Church girl, don't hurt nobody, right? So, so you yeah, you go to church, but you know, it's okay to back it up. It's okay to let it go. It's okay to twerk. It's okay to do all these different things. And then uh, she, she talks about um, getting tatted. And you can be my daddy if you want to. And then she uses that word again. I'm a bus it, bus it, bus it, bus it, back it up, right? We, we already talked about that. And then up here, she talks about she going to shake that A and then pretty tig old bitties. If you don't know what tig old bitties are, just reverse the T and the B and you'll figure it out, all right? Uh, so, so once again, 
just straight up. And then once again, she's justifying this type of thing because I notice that she says here, you know, you got church in the morning, the morning, but you're doing God's work. You're going in. She ain't trying to hurt nobody. You know what? Yeah, you got to go to church next morning, but you, it's innocent. It's okay. You ain't trying to really hurt nobody. You're not really attending, intending anything to be negative, right? She just trying to do the best she can, happy on her own with her friends without a man. In other words, if you don't have a man and you want to be happy, yeah, you can go to church on Sunday morning, but you know what? You know, you just come to the club on Saturday night, let it go, have a good time because you're just trying to do the best that you can because you're kind of sad that you don't have a man and you're out with your friends, right? So once again, more and more of the same, more and more of the same, basically the same concept. Real quick, we got to hit Virgo's groove. First and foremost, I have a problem with this because he's referring to uh, the Zodiac signs which Christians should not even be involved in anything like that. Like, oh, what's your sign? Virgo, um, Scorpio, all that stuff. We shouldn't even be involved in that. So that's the first problem I have there. Once again, baby come over, encouraging some man to come over to her house. Why? Because right here, right now, I'm stuck. Lay down, baby, lock it right now. I want it right here, right now. I mean, it's so sensual, right? I mean, like the whole album is just very, very sensual. Then she's talking about a psychic. Now, don't worry, guys. I know I'm covering a lot of this stuff with these lyrics, but I'm going to get to what I believe Christians, sh uh, how Christians should respond in just a moment. Uh, no, we still grind like we used to, and we cut ties when we need to. Um, uh, I could be the one to take you there. I need more. I need more you to me on ecstasy. On this magic ride, baby, you can hit this. Don't be scared. Baby, you can hit this. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. You can hit this, right? Like, really? Wow. 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 Baby, come over more and more of the same. Uh, your hands, your hands so strong when they're gripping on me. Kiss me when you bruise me. Are we talking about like, wait, what? Are we, are we talking about physical pain now? Like, he bruise me and then kiss me where you bruise me during sex and then taste me the fleshy part we know what she's talking about come on i scream so loud i cuss myself like wow okay I i'm gonna move this video along here or i'm gonna be here all day uh somewhere in here i think she okay touch me touch me please me kiss me boy so on and so forth okay now Let's look at one last one, and I believe it's the Summer Renaissance, all right? So let's take a look at that one, and I believe that's the last track on here. We're not going to spend much time on it, but once again, baby, can I take you all the way? You sexy MF. Boy, you growing on me. Uh, you gangsta. Oh, okay, now look at this. I, I just want to touch you. I can feel it through those jeans. Now, we know what she's talking about, right? We know what she is talking about, all right? Uh got you walking with a limp. I mean, wow. Okay. You sexy MF boy, you growing on me, uh, so on and so forth. Um, okay. Okay. You a sweetie pie. Come let me eat you dominate. Uh, okay. Now, now she's talking about role playing, right? Come and get what I came for. Hell of night. Now know you love when I role play. Who am I now? I'm a doc. I'm a nurse. I'm a teacher. Dominate is the best way to beat you. Uh, so on and so forth. If you make my body talk, I'll leave you in a trance. So on, so on, 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 more and more of the same uh, and, and on and on it goes. Okay, so how should we as Christians respond to this? Now, you might think as you've watched this video that I'm basically trying to be the Holy Spirit in your life and I'm trying to tell you that you should never, ever, 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 ever listen to a Beyonce song ever in your life again. Listen, I'm not saying that, let's say you're at a wedding and it's a reception and the love on top comes on and you, I'm not saying you need to be that weird Christian that walks off the, 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 you know, off the, the dance floor because you don't want to quote unquote support anything Beyonce. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying and encouraging you to do is to be discerning, right? To do what I just did before you start listening to music just because it has a good beat to it. Look up the lyrics online and really truly ask yourself, should I as a Christian man, as a Christian woman be supporting this? Should I be putting this in my spirit? Should I be listening to this type of music? And I don't see how you could read this type of stuff and come away with the answer, yes. But if it is a song that maybe she 
has that is clean, which is not that many, but if you see some that are clean and kind of uplifting, I'm not saying that you can't listen to that particular song, but let me just put something on your mind. And this is what I want to share with you. If you're with me towards the end of this video, this is what I want to leave with you. I want to just paint a picture in your mind. Let's just say you are a, a, a black person. You're living in the 50s, 60s, so civil rights era, things like that, right? Let's say you have a, an artist, you really, really love their music. I mean, it's a white artist, you love their music, it's great, you dance to it all the time, right? Let's say you then saw, or they came out with an album, and on that album, they had some, half the album was racist. I mean, straight up lyrics were about, you know, Jim Crow and slavery was right and segregation and all these different things that, you know, are derogatory towards black people. What would you be your response? Would you just be like, oh, I'm gonna give that person a pass because I like their music and you know what, their earlier albums were good and you know what? Or would that give you an insight into the very heart of that particular person? Wouldn't, wouldn't that, wouldn't that let you know that, okay, there's something ungodly about this particular person that's going to give me pause about wanting to support them anymore because of what I am listening to and what I'm hearing now. I hope and pray that after you've seen this video, it has the same effect on you with regard to Beyonce. So what should, what should we do? We need to pray for her, okay? Because she is very influential over a lot of people. A lot of people idolize her, worship her, go to her concerts, fall out. By the way, don't be like one pastor, I'm not gonna mention his name, who took his daughter to go see Beyonce at a concert. I mean, it, all right, I'm gonna leave that alone. All right, guys, but we gotta be discerning. Christians, we need to come out of this world, y'all. We gotta step up. We gotta stop being so worldly. So I wanna encourage us to pray for her Pray for uh, her to come to, um, to understand the error in her ways, to use her platform for good, uh, godly purposes. I want to ask you to pray for the people who follow her right now so that they would have the scales removed from their eyes so that they would come to understand, wait, I don't know if as a Christian I need to be supporting this. Pray for the young girls who feel like they have to emulate this type of behavior. They have to twerk. They have to shake. They have to do the uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm sorry. That was bad, right? But you get my point. Like, th you see girls doing this type of stuff, and they're just trying to be like her because they think that she is cool, right? We need to pray for all the beehive people who are just following blindly. But y'all, this video really isn't all about Beyonce, is it? It's not. It's really about how we as Christians should respond to music in general. And for me personally, I put music into one of four categories. Either it is Christian or it is secular but clean. In other words, it's not mentioning Jesus, but it's it has a clean message about love, about relationships and respect. Or maybe it's neutral, like instrumental music, right? It doesn't have any message, but it's just kind of groovy, jazz, whatever. And then there's anti-Christian music, satanic, demonic music with a message like that. Guys, this, this stuff right here is in category number four. So when you come across music that's in category number four as a Christian, our only response is that we need to reject it. So I would love to hear from you. I know this was a super long video, but I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, do me a favor and share it with someone. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below about this particular video, about Beyonce. Do you follow her? Do you support her? Do you believe it's okay to attend her concerts, uh, stream her stuff on Spotify? Like, let me go. Let's get the conversation going. And I would love to engage with you all on the comment section down below. All right, I'll see y'all the next video. Bye for now.